If you want to know how to take your email and filter it down and automatically create Microsoft Planner tasks from those emails, but in addition to that, add the attachments from your emails into Planner tasks, this video is going to show you how. It built on a solution I did before, but what I'm doing differently this time is trying to make it much simpler to understand and it actually runs a lot faster. And I'll show you where that works when I get to the video. So don't forget to like and subscribe if you want to see more of these videos. And for now, enjoy. So I won't go step by step through the previous actions that we've done in the other video. We'll link to that in the comments for this particular one. But you have when an email arrives version three. This is the office version of email rather than your personal Outlook email. There's two different groups that you'll find in my other video. So we select that. And when I said about filtering your emails, let's just dwell on that a little bit. You can start to use these parameters to look for emails with attachments, to look for emails that are maybe urgent, only look for emails with attachment, which you can see I've put yes. And then you can start to look into your, uh, your particular inbox folders if you have any set up. And you'll see there I've got quite a few set up. So you can start to narrow down the search. Equally, if in Outlook you've set up a folder and uh, you want that folder to be kind of the folder that will create your planner actions from, all you'd need to do is configure this action to monitor that folder. Maybe it's called Plan Me and drag an email into that folder. And as soon as you do that, this will wake up. That's what this trigger will do. So the difference here, I've slightly restructured this uh, flow for you to make it a little easier to understand. On the assumption that we've definitely got an email that we're interested in, then we're gonna automatically create the task in Planner. And this action here comes from a group of actions all relating to Planner. I'll just show you those here. We've got quite a few, so we're just going to create a task. That's the first thing we're going to do. You'll see these preview activities here. Avoid those for now. We'll just focus on the well, the current production one is what we'll call it. So to create a task, what we do is we want to put it into an existing plan. So we've got a Cloud 365 group and a plan called Sprints. And the title we're going to give it is just the subject of the email. Like I say, we've pre-filtered this. So the expectation here when we're creating this task is that we definitely want to do the create the task piece. So that's all I've done there. I've put it in a bucket. You can select the bucket that you want from your own plan. So the previous video shows you how to set all that up. But then all we do, as we've done before, is we say, OK, let's look at all the attachments and let's make sure that the attachment has a property of is in line equal to true. I'll just quickly show you where that comes from. That comes from the when a new email arrives. And if you click see more, you'll see all these lovely extra pieces of information that you can uh, you can glean from that particular action. So here we go. Attachments is in line, which means that uh, we're looking for things that are just pictures on an email. We want to discard those. We want those genuine file attachments. When those file attachments arrive, what we'll then do, and notice this is in an apply to each, for each of those attachments, we'll grab the attachment. And again, I've shown you this action in another video, but we use the attachment message ID and the attachment ID. And we create a file in SharePoint in this case. You can choose to create this wherever you like. But the only additional item that I've got in here over and above the other video then is that we then, I'm just grabbing the uh, link to the file that I've just created and updated. The reason I'm doing that is because if you look at this action here, the update task details, which is in Planner, if I want to add something into the planner itself, the planner task itself, like this, I'm a bit limited when I choose dynamic content. You can see here in the new designer, there's not an awful lot for me to pick from. So just to be safe, what I've done here is a compose, which actually grabs an item from the file properties. And in this case, the item is called link. So just to scroll down to that, that's what it's referred to in that particular action outputs. So that's all I've really done is if you look back at the flow, just to read it to you in plain English, what it's actually doing is saying when an email arrives, check it's something I'm definitely interested in. If it is, create a task and then for all of the attachments, which it's reading from the information off that email, go through and do this process. Grab it, create the file, update the file properties with the links and various different things you want to do. Grab the link to that particular storage location and then pop it into the task. And if I run this to show you what happens, it's exactly the same process as you saw previously for a single planner item, but this will cater, it's perhaps a more robust solution, it will cater for one or many attachments and automatically create those planner tasks for you. So let's give it a whirl. 
So you'll see it's run successfully, it's created the first task, we'll go there in a minute, and it thinks in the particular email I'm testing with, I've got 10 attachments, but as you can see, because it's ignored the first one, not all of them are genuine. So let's just quickly scroll through, that's not a genuine one, that's just a picture, here's a genuine one, so it's grabbed the attachment, um, you can open up yours and have a little look at the inputs just to validate what those attachments are. Um, looking in the body particularly because that will give you information about the attachment and what it's going to do with it. So you can see it's a document. We create the file, we update the file, we grab the link to that item. Again, I just use Compose all the time because it's a really nice way to debug. You can see I've got a link there, maybe that works, maybe it doesn't. If yours doesn't, you can tinker with that Compose to get you the right items. But then we update the task details and that's what this particular part of the action is doing. So just a quick scroll through, we can see it does it once, twice, and then all the rest is just uh, just nothing really. So let's go and have a look at what that looks like in the plan. So I'm into plan here, and if I open up this particular item, I've got two attachments. I've mentioned in, again, the previous video that you might want to put some meaningful data into these individual attachments, but you can get that as you grab them, create it dynamically, and in that little apply to each loop, just put whatever information you want there. So that all works nicely. There's two things I just wanted to share with you uh, before we do leave this video. And the first one is if we have a look at how long that particular flow run took, you'll notice it took about 11, 12 seconds. A few runs of this, 10, 9, 11, 12. So 11, 12 seconds. The one I did previously, and I don't mind showing you this because it was very inefficient. And thank you, James, for, uh, for calling that out. I was clearly having a moment that day. What I'd done is I'd, I'd gone, okay, I've filtered my email, I want to initialize an array because I want to store some data about each of the attachments, then gone through the apply to each loop, then got the attachment, created the file, and then put the link to the file into an array. Then, this is just a, a debugging compose, create a task once you've done all of that lovely stuff, and then go through a loop for each of those attachments in the array, so each of the links effectively, and update the task details. So. The first thing I want to say is it's legitimate to do it this way if you like it like that. Um, your brain may work differently to mine and certainly my brain worked differently to James's when I was creating this one. But you'll see it's a little bit bigger and it might be a little bit harder to process what's going on there if you inherit this. So number one, if you're, you're into efficiency, it's perhaps, and you're into future support, it's perhaps better to use less actions. It's definitely better to use less actions in Power Automate because each of these physical, visible actions you've got here do consume compute power, which means they do consume time and actions in terms of Power Automate. And if we just have a very brief look, it's a really simple example, but you will see most of the runs 12, 14, 15 seconds, three or four seconds longer because of those additional actions. So if you're into processing and efficiency and you're also into simplicity, do think carefully about how you build these loops that you have in your Power Automate tasks because one small change, like the change that I made there, uh, and thank you James again for that suggestion, can really make an impact on how easy it is for someone else to read your Power Automate and also how long they take to run. So I hope that's been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.